Good evening everyone, time for another member update. So let's start out with the gold chart. Now we've been hearing a lot recently about the tremendously lagging sales of the Gold Eagle and to some what, uh, to another extent, the Maples and, and also the gold uh, coins out of the Perth Mint. And uh, there's an interesting article on Silver Doctors about that as well. Uh, SRS Rocco has published an article about how the Chinese have more than made up for that. But looking at the gold chart, uh, do we see anything reflecting that? No, we don't. And the reason why is because gold eagle sales don't drive the price of gold. Uh, in fact, gold bar sales don't drive the price of gold. What drives the price of gold is the money that's allowed to flow into these paper contracts and whether or not they can continue the charade or how long they can continue the charade. So we've seen a lot of drops in bullion sales in the past. Some are attributing it to optimism about the Trump administration. I don't know. I think it's probably seasonal, but uh, if it is optimism about the future, then that would indicate that the reason why people have been buying uh, precious metals up until this point for this entire bull market I think a statistic that I or a comment that I saw today was that that gold had gone from twenty dollars to twelve hundred dollars over the course of about seventy years, which is a fifty nine hundred percent return or approximately seventy percent a year return. I have a hard time believing that that it's seventy percent a year, and I have to do the math. But you can see here very strong bull market. We're still in it, and. Um, it makes sense if that's the case that the reason why people buy precious metals is because they're pessimistic about uh, the future and government uh, in the future and with good reason so let's jump over to the uh, Bitcoin chart now we did get that kind of correction I was looking for I thought we had failed on this other shoulder and it did appear to uh, fall off very dramatically and then kind of made a bounce here you can see the bottom this is on bitstamp you can see the bottom coming in around 924 or so uh, actually 909 is the lowest print that we get there uh, but you can see we're rallying now up to 1069 very volatile not as volatile as this sort of top we put in there but nevertheless very volatile uh, China is still behind at 1054 but not that far behind, not as far behind as it has been. So I want to take you over to Poloniex, but before we do that, I want to read this Zero Hedge article um, about Bitcoin. Now, I've been talking about this for some time, that I'm seeing a rotation out of Bitcoin into the other cryptocurrencies. And actually, it wasn't really a rotation. When we were getting near that 30 billion dollar market cap and we have backed off from that significantly hopefully world coin index is still showing that up at the top here but we were starting to approach that uh, 30 billion dollar market cap and here it is at 25.27 so even though it's backed off some uh, 25 billion dollars is still very close to the highest we've ever seen and you can see uh, I pointed out that uh, we've got Ethereum here coming in at almost four billion dollars. So the other cryptocurrencies have more than made up for the selling in Bitcoin, and that's now we're seeing zero hedge come along with what I've been talking about for a while. This is traders are selling Bitcoin, buying Ether. Bitcoin rebounds from the biggest drop in years. The previously discussed fears of an imminent forking in Bitcoin have led to the biggest drop in Bitcoin between Thursday and Saturday, as investors sold. The digital currency on worries about its future, although it managed to regain some footing on Monday, rebounding back over a thousand dollars after soaring to an all-time high of 1350 as recently as March 10th on speculation that regulators could approve the first U.S. Bitcoin exchange trade exchange traded fund the following day. The SEC denied the application, but the negative impact was transitory. The digital currency then slipped back. 
The drop accelerated on Thursday and Bitcoin hit five week low of 944 on Saturday, but Bitcoin recovered a little on Sunday and built those gains into Monday, climbing around 2.5% to roughly $1,000. $1,050. As discussed over the weekend, the sell-off was driven by a long-standing and intensifying row over whether and how to increase the capacity of the blocks that Bitcoin transactions are processed in so as to make sure there are no delays in transactions being finalized, such as of Sunday took as long as four months and the delay is growing ever faster, making a solution even unpalatable inevitable. The Bitcoin scaling debate is a risk for the network and highlights core issues in terms of governance and this is where more nimble crypto competitors see advantage in flushing out their capabilities sooner, said Charles Hayter, CEO a Digital Currency Analyst's website Crypto Compare cited by Reuters. However, as Bitcoin's sun may be setting, it's only for the time being. It is rapidly rising for some of the most key cryptocurrency competitors, chief among them Ether. The digital currency behind Ethereum, a project that some experts say holds more potential than Bitcoin and which recently was supported by a consortium of corporations including JP Morgan and IBM, tripled in value this month, jumping to record highs in the mid $50 before retracing some of the dramatic gains and stabilizing in the $40 range. And while conventional capital markets may be experiencing a great rotation out of retail cash into ETFs, as Reuters puts it, a similar dynamic was taking place in the crypto coin realm. Quote, some experts and traders were selling Bitcoin and buying Ether, which was exacerbating the falls in the original cryptocurrency. As Reuters reported, traders in the space are looking for better returns in the more risky and nascent cryptos such as Dash, Monero, and Ethereum and are looking to replicate the extraordinary returns that Bitcoin saw in its early days, added Hayter. Meanwhile, with the recent Chinese crackdown on Bitcoin seemingly eliminating the possibility of using the cryptocurrency to bypass China's capital controls, sending Chinese trading volumes to nominal levels, thereby removing one of the most rabid buyers of the legacy crypto coin, the biggest losers may be the Winklevoss twins. The SEC dashed Cameron and Tyler Winklevoss's Bitcoin ambitions earlier in the month by rejecting their application to list an exchange-traded fund linked to the digital currency. It remains to be seen if Ethereum and its altcoin peers can replicate the Bitcoin move from 2013 when Bitcoin went from double digits to over $1,000 in a span of weeks. So there's Zero Hedge starting to cover the alt coin market. Now I wanted to show you uh, Poloniex. This uh, Florin coin, this is a chart of Florin coin. This is one coin that I have a significant percentage of the coin. But you can see here, if, if we look up here, you can see for example here now at the top percentage change we've got Lisk coming in with a 52% move here. So Lisk is a relatively new coin. You can see how big that move is though, 931 up to 27. So that's a tripling. I don't think we can do the uh, all. Yeah, it's too new of a coin. It only goes back to February, but you can see that uh, significant move. We also have AMP here at almost a 50% move. We have Gollum, which is a newer coin. Uh, library credits, which is a kind of a cousin or peer to Florin coin, and a lot of others here that you can play with. So, what do I recommend if you're going to play with these? Probably what I found would have been most successful for me. I had some uh, Pascal coin as well. Is after a coin has come out, and I think I'll use library credits to explain this. After a coin has come out and kind of done that. Uh, swoop dive sort of thing that these coins do where they usually spike when they come out and then they kind of find a bottom. Uh, probably the best strategy is to just begin to accumulate the coin. Uh, now how, as to which coin it is, I can't tell you. If, if the coin trades on multiple exchanges, that's a plus. If the coin has a decent market cap, that's a plus. But a lot of these coins are doing things like going tenfold. Uh, Ethereum hasn't quite made a tenfold move, but it's made a major move. 
So if you just begin to accumulate them when they're near a low price, there's a very good chance that you might just be sitting on one that's going to make a tenfold, even possibly a hundredfold move. Uh, it's hard to do, but then again, it's not that hard to pick up a significant amount of these for not much if you pick them up when they're really cheap. And uh, if you're talking about 10 to 1 moves in some of these coins, then you really only have to be right once out of 10 times to break even or make some money. And if you're right twice out of 10 times, you can double your money. So uh, an interesting bet there. So I want to talk a little bit about the baby boomers and what I think is coming up here with their retirement. Now I want to start with this chart. This is, I think, showing you the time bomb that's coming. And this is the elderly population growth rate. And this is the trend in that. So you can see this is the population of ages 65 and older and their percentage of the population. So back at the turn of the century, 1900, uh, the 20th century, it was around 4% stayed there all the way to, uh, you know, through the depression where it ticked up to around 6%. Now you can see what they're projecting here is 20% uh, uh, by the time we get to that period of where all the baby boomers are retired. But the number that we're looking at right now that's really scary is this projection going between now and 2020. You can see we're talking about a jump from 12 to 16 percent and up to 20 percent uh, to into 2025 or so. So we're on the edge of a very very sharp increase in the number of retired people. People who are retiring are going to sell their investments. If that's stocks, if that's bonds, whatever it is, this will put a tremendous amount of pressure on the markets. I don't see how it can't. But uh, things are even more dire. Uh, this definitely is a time bomb. This is just an older article, but it just sums up some of the problems that we're facing here. Baby boomers retirement woes summed up in five statistics. No one ever said the road to retirement is an easy path traveled, but it's looking to be particularly bumpy and pothole filled for baby boomers. The baby boomer generation began retiring earlier this decade and the ex expectation is that roughly 10,000 boomers will exit the workforce each day between now and the end of the next decade. But for many baby boomers, the reality of being able to retire comfortably and on their own terms may not be possible. The following five statistics perfectly sum up the woes that many baby boomers are facing as they approach or enter retirement. Number one. 59% are relying heavily on Social Security. And uh, that's absolutely shocking because now they're going to go into the numbers there of uh, what they think Social Security is going to be. But what happens if the whole thing blows up? Uh, I mean, it could be much, much worse if 60% of the population is left high and dry. Number two, 45% have no retirement savings. Here's a terrifying nugget of data to wrap your hands around based on IRI data. Just 55% of respondents in its study had retirement savings in 2016. That's unbelievable. Half of the baby boomers have no retirement savings. Number three, 30% postponed their retirement plans. Uh, so a third of them aren't even going to be able to retire. What's that going to do to the job market? It, that's not going to be good. Number four. 30% stopped contributing to retirement accounts. Uh, also the IRI report, 30% of baby boomer responded that they've stopped contributing to retirement accounts. 16% also took premature withdrawals from their retirement accounts. By the way, that includes me, but I put my money in silver and cryptocurrencies. I strongly doubt that even the tiniest percentage who took their money out in early uh, withdrawals, put it into silver and cryptocurrencies. And number five, 44% are lugging around debt. Based on the Urban Institute data project, more baby boomers than ever are hanging up their work gloves while still toting around sizable levels of debt. The study notes that the percentage of adults aged 65 and up with debt rose from 30% in 1998 to 44% 
by 2012. Furthermore, nearly a quarter of all retirees enter retirement with mortgage debt. The study pinpointed $24,000 as the median amount older adults owed in debt in 2012. Now, you would think that most people, by the time they retire, would be able to pay off their house. But that's not the case. That's certainly my goal. I don't know if I'm going to make it. My house isn't paid off. But uh, that's a reasonable goal. I know my parents did that, and a lot of people have done that. But the baby boomers are not doing it. In fact, 44% of them are in debt besides that. So these are shocking statistics. This is a, this is a time bomb, and unfortunately, the time bomb is going to blow right when... Uh, the markets crash it's going to be the reason why they crash because uh, they're going to it's going to be a panic and people trying to salvage what they have but it's just going to be people piling over each other and of course that's going to be reflected in the markets again we'll pull up the dow industrial as andy hoffman says propaganda average and of course this thing is no doubt an accident waiting to happen there's just absolutely no way that you can have a market that looks like that and not have it end very, very badly. Even just a correction down to the trend line, in other words, the bull market stays intact, is going to bring us to 9,000 on the Dow. It's going to be a 50% correction. So that means that uh, their assets that these baby boomers are counting on are going to be cut in half. Uh, even without entering into a bear market and with all these other things that they're looking at as well. So it's definitely a time bomb. So again, let me reiterate, if you're looking at the cryptocurrencies, the alts are an interesting play. Uh, I like to go to Poloniex and just click the percentage change. Uh, sometimes you can get into a coin when it's having a pullback. So what I like to do is watch a coin like right now the hot one is Lisk making a big move if you're bullish on the coin sometimes you can catch it on a pullback like right in here uh, if you would have got in there you'd have an easy double so keep an eye on that and we'll talk to you next time